Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here with a new video about my top five features of Cineware version 2.0. And I'm in Chicago and there of course goes the ambulance or police sirens that go by every 10 seconds that I try to record a video. But anyway, it is October 2014 as I'm recording this. Maybe not when you're watching it. It might be when you're watching it. If it just came out and you want to check this out, it might be October 2596 and we're on Creative Cloud version 2492 or something. And you're less concerned about these features because by then you're using your crazy Adobe Space Helmets to design everything in your mind. But as of right now, these are some big updates I'm really excited to show off and talk about. If you are, aren't familiar with what Cineware is, it's part of After Effects that links Cinema 4D files into After Effects without having to render it and allows you to save time on rendering by bringing in Cinema 4D files natively without rendering and compositing elements on top of it, as well as on the Cineware effect, do things like bring in your Cinema 4D cameras into After Effects or vice versa, add a multi-pass workflow with the click of a button and all sorts of useful features. So it's definitely something that I use for specific things and find value in. And there's some really important updates that are gonna help out and change some ways that we work. So let's get started with the list. Number one top new feature, Cinema 4D Lite R16. So if you're mainly an After Effects user and you're using just the light version of Cinema 4D that comes with After Effects, it has been updated to R16, which came out about a month ago. And that's probably the biggest deal because Cinema 4D Lite previously was R14, which was two versions behind. So there's been a lot of updates, not only in R16, but in R14. So there's lots of really important things and lots of little useful things. Everything from deformers having this fit to parent switch to these new cog wheels and soloing. And there's been so many updates and features in the last two versions that have really moved things along. Cinema 4D like getting up to consistency with Cinema 4D R16 and everything we're used to in this whole studio version is a really big deal. So I do have a couple other videos specifically going over R16 updates for Cinema 4D, a lot of which will be relevant to Cinema 4D Lite. So I'll include the links of those in the description. Be sure to check those out because there's lots of new updates from Cinema 4D. And the light version being now R16 as well is really gonna help everything not only be consistent, but bring a lot of new features that have been coming out in Cinema 4D to Cinema 4D Lite users from After Effects. And one of those updates brings me to number two, R16 Reflections Compatibility. So in R16, one of the biggest updates is this new reflectance system of texturing, which basically can replace the entire way that we texture 3D materials. And that's of course included in Cinema 4D Lite. And if you're on the studio version of Cinema 4D, because the updates from After Effects and Cinema 4D are staggered a bit. R16 came out before Cineware 2.0 in After Effects. So if you are working with a new reflections system in R16, where we can add layers of reflectance and change things like different types of Fresnels and bump for each layers and really build out new unique textures that we couldn't do before. If you brought that Cinema 4D file into After Effects using Cineware, those new textures would not show up. And it was one little thing that I was really waiting for this update to come in and fix so those could be consistent. So now if you're using R16 textures and you're bringing your Cinema 4D files into After Effects, those will all show up and it'll work and Cinema 2.0 supports the new texturing system with the new reflectance system in Cinema 4D. And if you're a Cinema 4D light user, there are a lot of new presets in the presets of Cinema 4D specifically for light where you can grab some great textures. So that's a big one and it really helps make everything consistent and up to date between both programs. Number three, region of interest in Cineware inside of After Effects. So in Cinema 4D, we can Alt R to get just a region render and just render part of that. And we could do the same thing in After Effects if we had just a regular After Effects composition, there's this render region of interest button down here where we can click and just render part of that. But previously we did that with Cinema 4D layers, it would still render behind the scenes the whole layer. Now, if you're doing that, let's say we made updates to this Cinema 4D file and we only want to render one little part of it. Let's just say these first couple letters, it would 
only render the 3D parts that it needs to and not do all of that. So it's a good time saver. And if you're really only working on some extra effects or compositing or something that affect only one part of the 3D layer, you don't have to wait for it to render the parts you're not looking at because the region of interest now processes only the parts of Cinema 4D layers that you need it to. Number four, the synchronized switch. So previously, if you, you had a Cinema 4D file on the Cineware layer, there would be apply to all buttons, and you'll notice that's no longer here. And what is happening is if you have multiple layers of Cinema 4D, so let's just make a copy of this with Command D, and say this was an additional Cinema 4D layer, now you'll see there's this synchronized layer switch, and this automatically is checked. And this will keep everything consistent through all Cinema 4D layers in the comp by default. So if I change this first one to software render and we hide this adjustment layer and jump ahead, you can see it's automatically changed the second one. And this can be really useful for things like multi-pass options. So let's turn back on our final render and turn on our adjustment layers. And let's say we were doing a multi-pass workflow. So we'd add image layers and we're gonna get all of our multi-pass linear workflow layers that are going to add and multiply together to build out our final shot. And if we wanted to just adjust one of these with software renders and not have to worry about going and hitting that apply all button, this is by default on. That does mean, however, let's undo some of that, that if you do want to do things that are not applied to all, you do need to remember to check it off. So as an example, in this Cinema 4D scene, I actually have two cameras. I have camera one, which is over here. And if I play through this, it has a little bit of camera animation and camera two, which is on the other side recording the same action. And if I go to After Effects on the Cineware layer, I can select Cinema 4D camera if I want to. And then I could switch between those cameras. So if I wanted a multi-shot option of the same file, I could do that. However, if I say it had the first second on this camera one and I'll end this one there and just duplicate this whole footage. And then let's say the second one, I want to cut to camera two. So I'll set camera to camera two and do okay. It's going to automatically apply that to this other one. And it's actually in this case, not what I want. So it's a good option, but it's something to remember that you'll need to shut off. So on the second one, I would want to not synchronize that layer. So I'll uncheck that. And then on this one, I'm going to change it back to camera one. And now if I go to that second copy of the same Cinema 4D file set to camera two, it's gonna show that camera two and not automatically swap it to camera one because I've unchecked synchronized layer. So it's just a different way of working with it. Most of the times you're gonna wanna do that idea of apply to all so it just saves some time and helps the worry of having to go through and manually adding apply to all. And just something to remember if you do want to do things like separate options for multiple Cinema 4D files in the same composition to uncheck it as you need to. Last one, number five, collecting Cinema 4D files. So say that this is a project that we're going to have to send out to someone else and maybe they're making a change to it and we need to collect all the assets. And rather than try and organize them in Finder, in After Effects we can do file dependencies collect files and that will save out all of the files and make sure that i'm sending everything out and previously it wouldn't grab the cinema 4d files now it will do that so it's just making sure that it's looking at those as footage and grabbing those assets correctly so one little helpful thing probably the most minor but if you ever use this collect files and you're working between different offices or sending your assets around this way it's a good thing to know that's there so there is a lot of updates, the biggest of which being Cinema 4D Lite R16 and these new reflections and everything being just compatible and consistent now. So it's some great new updates, definitely some things that I'm excited to get back into my workflow and utilize some of these new features. So I hope you get into this stuff too. And if you want to check out more of my tutorials, you can subscribe on youtube.com slash Sean Frangella, as well as follow me on twitter.com slash Sean Frangella if you want to ask questions, request tutorials or just interact on the internet and talk about whatever. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.